everything. All right. Well, thank you, Matt, for being on the coding channel of the year. We're up for streaming. We're going to win it. We're the only coding channel competing. Um, but no, uh, <laughs> why don't you uh, introduce yourself and your channel for everybody? What's up, guys? My name is Matt. I run a channel called Engineer Truth, where I make realistic career videos. I recently graduated from Dev Mountain, which is a coding boot camp. Uh, and that location I attended to was in Provo, Utah. So I just came back, and uh, Dylan's going to ask me questions about my experience there. Yeah. Um, we're going to ask four basic questions and uh, go off tangent like I always do a little bit in, in, the, in between. The, the first question I kind of want to know is, what was the real one thing that stood out about Dev Mountain or, or coding boot camps in general? Like, what did you absolutely just love about the whole process? Uh, one thing I like about the whole process is the immersiveness. It's actually called immersive boot camp, and the fact that you live there, they have provide housing, so you're living with students, and then you're pretty much just coding about 12 hours every day uh, is like really a big part of the experience. It feels like a legitimate boot camp, um, and also surprised with how good our lead instructor was. He had about eight years of experience uh, as a developer. And I felt like he was also good at explaining things. He had a very like loud voice and also very clear. So I would say those are the two things that really stood out. When you say immersive, can you kind of just give a rough estimate of how much time you spent in class combined with how much time out of class per week that you, you spent working on your um, coding boot camp? Yeah, so the official time of the boot camp is eight hours per weekday. So you spend four hours in lecture, then four hours I would say like guided practice with mentors there if to help you if you need help and you're assigned particular projects. And then after that, those four hours, then you do, it's up to you, but in my case, I did an additional four hours after that where I just either worked on stuff that was gonna be the next day or I just uh, like fine tuned the projects that was assigned for that day or I just did my own projects for the, during that time. So that's how it usually divided up. Saturdays and Sundays are optional, but since I was in Provo, Utah, and I had literally nothing else to do, uh, I usually also coded or worked on my YouTube channel on the weekends. Nice. Uh, so uh, like anything that is a three-month uh, immersive experience, I'm sure there was one or two uh, maybe less than positive points or stuff that needed improvement upon. What would you say was kind of would be for the average person maybe a negative aspect of the boot camp or something that you didn't necessarily agree with how it was taught or the the how it was kind of introduced or anything along that lines yeah for sure uh we had a guest lecture for angular and uh because our our main lecture went on vacation and so our guest lecture for angular was awful uh he would take like about 35 minutes to get ready and this is like 35 minutes of our class time, not like 35 minutes before our class starts. Like he would take 35 minutes to just get the projects open and to get started. So as a student, you have three hours of lecture, three or four hours of lecture. And for the first like 35 minutes or even up to an hour, uh, the guy was just like getting things off GitHub, like loading the project, like getting the work environment ready. And uh, he did that five days in a row, which it impressed me that he was able to screw up <laughs> like third, third day I was like oh yeah you got okay like all right first day is like cool you know like maybe he, he wasn't expecting this second day you're like okay well maybe you know kind of stretching it but third or fourth and fifth day I was uh I was legitimately mad and I think a lot of students were mad um also we had uh, a guy do our job prep and he had a a spray and pray model where he told us to add random developers on LinkedIn and send them messages uh super spray and pray model of like, hey, I'm the new developer in town. Uh, I was wondering if you if you guys got any jobs or like if you knew, how, how did you get your foot in the door as a developer? And just like messaging random developers on LinkedIn. Uh, you know, I've talked to a number of developers on my YouTube channel, including Quincy Larson, and I think many of them would uh, disagree with that method of spraying messages to random developers on LinkedIn and hoping that something happens from that. Yeah, good luck with that, man. <laughs> I'm sure one or two people have got it. I, I imagine it's like just mass emailing girls on Facebook saying, hey, baby, you want the dick? <laughs> <laughs> it's probably how successful that's going to be. Yeah, it's about the same rate. It's about the same rate. It, it, it's probably, it's it, it's definitely a similar strategy, and we can both see in why both situations that it doesn't work. Okay, so um, 
this may be kind of related to the second question, but if you were to change something and it was up to you to kind of improve upon the boot camp or boot camps in general, what would be the one thing you would change? Not necessarily about your boot camp, but uh, it could be that, but in general as well. Uh, I mean, besides just switching out those two people, like the Angular lecture and also the job, job prep guy, like that would be like the biggest fixes, definitely switching those guys out. Um, particularly the, the job prep guy, started his job prep saying, oh yeah, I've never worked as a developer, but I'm gonna help you guys become a de get a developer job. Um, LOL, LOL. Uh, obviously like, not a good first impression. Um, I would say also like in a way to improve is that uh, they had uh, like our projects that were assigned to us that were kind of to help us reinforce the point. Like they would teach Angular and then after the Angular lecture, they would have an Angular project. Uh, sometimes the projects were pretty out of sync of what was taught in the class or were, haven't been updated in a long time uh, those could have definitely been improved uh, but besides that like I mean I was really happy with the structure because it was three months and we did three projects I thought that was like perfect amount of perfect amount of projects to do and I think it was a really good balance between like lecture and project time yeah and I, I saw some of your projects I I mean, I was pretty thoroughly impressed. They seemed very well done and professional. Yeah. So I could definitely a month per project seems about right to test yeah. out new skills and learn things. Yeah, I thought it was good because like if you do more projects, you're just like spending a lot of time working on projects. You're not learning enough like lectures. So I thought it was a really good balance. Nice. All right. Uh, final question: um, Would you recommend Dev Mountain or coding boot camps to the average person, and who wouldn't you recommend it to? So I think um, if you're a person that has been coding for a couple months on your own now and you're like, oh, I, I could see myself doing this as a job, that's the kind of person that should go to a coding boot camp. If you're like, uh, I don't know, like I just thought like on a whim, I saw this like banner on like Facebook. It says like I could go, to, I could become earning 100K in like three months from now. Uh, that's like not the person to sign up because you don't have any, you don't even know if you like it. And like you have to be able to teach yourself at least for a couple months on your own to really evaluate if this is something that you like or that's something that you would want to do or even you have any talent in. Because if you go in raw with no background at all, you're honestly going to walk out like with a little bit more skill, but you're going to get way more out of it if you practice like a lot, a lot beforehand. Like, I don't know, you, you and I practiced quite a bit before we uh, did these kind of things. So, yeah. Yeah, man, practice is good. Um, going unprepared into something that you're going to spend 60 hours a week doing yeah. is not a uh, good advice yeah. for anybody. Well, I would say like, you know, say like me coming in, right? I had practiced about like three months before I went to Dev Mountain. Okay. So I practiced three months. The whole, the whole boot camp is about three months long. Like there's no time for you to get to catch up to me because like, how, how are you going to ever catch up if I'm there for 12 hours a day and you're also there for 12 hours a day, what time do you have to catch up to me? You're never going to catch up to my level. But most importantly, like if you learn the basics beforehand, then you could focus on learning the more advanced concepts. But if you're there and you're barely learning like, oh, what's a function? Oh, what do you mean by return? Like what happens if you don't return? What do you mean like this function has its own scope? Like things that you can learn on your own beforehand that do take a while to learn. Uh, if you know those things already coming in, then you can just focus on what you don't know. Nice. I, th I think it's kind of important to mention that you did the three months of prep from basically free resources of Code Academy yeah. and free Code Camp. So anyone can do it if they're determined yeah. enough. Yeah. But there's definitely like a, a like a jump between like free Code Camp and Code Academy and then getting a developer job. And I think that's where coding boot camps exist. Is like, yeah, okay, you did Code School and Code Academy or in like free Code Camp, but you still don't know how to, you still don't really know how to make anything to be honest. And then a lot of these free resources don't definitely don't cover cover enough backend like SQL, Mongo, or Node, right? So then you still have to learn those, um, and like that's I think that's where the bootcamp came in is that it taught me like a lot of backend stuff that's pretty hard to learn on your own at this current point. Nice. Well, I appreciate you uh, sharing some knowledge, <laughs> as uh, our boy Ty Lopez would say. Yeah. Uh, would you like to uh, go ahead and promote your book or anything, man? Uh, yeah, I mean, my book, New Grad Job Hacks, is on Amazon right now. has five-star rated. Uh, be sure to check it out, New Grad Job Hacks. Or if not, you guys could just check out my YouTube channel, Engineer Truth, to learn more about realistic careers. 
yeah, just got that silver play button, and I, I hopefully it's, play button. it's on the way, man. Okay. That, that, that means he's legit, Allegedly. guys. <laughs> Allegedly, he'll be on the way. Yeah, I, I'm hoping they send me like a wood tier one at ten thousand. They just invent that. They should, like, the wood, they should make the wood tier one at ten thousand. Yeah. It's like it's like a, just like a it's like made out of shitty ass wood. Like it's not even wood. It's like plastic covered, like, rotted and shit. <laughs> They send it to you all damaged and shit. They don't even send it package. They just slap it's like, a stamp they, they, they on it. They purposely that. misspell your name. It's like coding tutorials 180. Yeah. <laughs> like, thanks, like, thanks, dude. Thanks for watching the video. Special thanks to our sponsor, Dev Mountain. Definitely check them out at devmountain.com. If you're looking for a boot camp that's in front end development, iOS, or UX, go ahead and give them a shot. Tuition includes housing, so you can get up and go and fully immerse yourself in the program. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.